Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Eye YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you how I store my paper pumpkin stamps once I have used the kit. I hope you'll stick around and find out more. I want to say a big welcome back to my subscribers and regular viewers and if this is your first time to my channel I hope that by the end of this video you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on the bell for notifications. Like I mentioned in the intro today I'm going to be sharing with you my storage solution for my paper pumpkin kit stamps. Over on the left I have previous kits that I have stored in my pockets that I use and over on the right I have the stamps from the latest paper pumpkin kit March 2020. I'll be sharing with you the products that I use and I'll be showing you how I download the printables each month for the inserts. For my storage system I use DVD pockets or clear envelopes. I believe Stampin' Up! does sell some empty DVD containers that you could buy and use these same printables with, but these were much more economical for myself and because they're so skinny they take up less room. The pockets I use, you might already have some in your craft room. I have bought these before under a different brand, the Avriel Stampin' Die Storage Pockets. I will tell you that if you have those storage pockets, they are better quality than what I use, but on Amazon, I found packages of 100 for really good prices. I will have that linked in the description box below if you wanna go check it out. Here is the package that I get, and there are 100 pieces in each packet. When I store one of my stamp sets, I put the printable that I download and print from the Paper Pumpkin site, as well as the stamp set inside of the pocket. Now sometimes if I have kept the little insert that comes with the kit, I'll fold that up and put that in there as well. So once you're done with your kit each month and you're ready to store it, you will want to go to the Paper Pumpkin website, log into your account, and download the printables. I'll go ahead and show you here on screen that process. On screen now, you see what the Paper Pumpkin website looks like after you have logged in. What you're going to do is click on How Paper Pumpkin Works and then scroll to the bottom. They have a monthly unboxing video and right underneath each of those videos, it says Download the Stamp Case Insert. So you'll want to download the set that you're looking for and then it pulls up a PDF file. Now again, this is special because of the bonus stamp set, so there are two pages. You'll click on the print icon on the right, choose the printer that you want this to go to, and then click print. Now because I have already printed mine, I'm going to cancel out of this. They keep the last four months on Paper Pumpkin's website, but no fear, I have found a demonstrator who is kind enough to share the files. I think she must have just downloaded them previously and she has them archived on her blog. So I'll go ahead and pull up her website here and show you how you can find that. The blog is called Stamp Your Art Out and it is ran by Rachel Tessman, a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And she does have a YouTube channel which is full of lots of awesome videos. I will link her blog, this specific page, and her YouTube channel in the description box below. But you can see here, if you scroll through her site, she has the printables going back years. So it's a great resource. Make sure to stop by and tell her thanks and that you appreciate her keeping a hold of these so you can print them. Now you might notice that my prints don't look the greatest. I'm not sure what's going on with my printer. The ink levels are great, but for some reason I'm getting these stripes. I will tell you that normally they print just beautifully. For today's video, I'm gonna go ahead and use these ones, but I will probably reprint them in the future so the image looks much nicer. Once I have the pages printed, I cut this so it bleeds on the bottom, right, and top. And what that means is that the color portion of the image goes right up to the cut line. So you'll see there's no white border anymore. Okay. 
Once that has been cut off, I want my width to be 10 and a quarter inches. And that will be all the cutting you need to do. I'll go ahead and cut my other sheet quickly. Now, if you were gonna put these into one of the DVD cases, you will want to completely ignore the fold that I'm about to make. But to have these fit into the little envelopes that I use, I just then fold these each in half. You might notice that now the spine is no longer on the front showing the stamp set name, but that's no worries because it's right down here at the bottom so you can still know which month and what kit it came from. I got out two of my DVD pockets and then these just get slipped into the top of the pocket. Now I like to have it where the flap is now on the front and then later when I tuck the flap in it will go from the front to the back. So this month's Paper Pumpkin Kit was a little bit special. Normally you only get one stamp set in a kit, but because this was an anniversary month, we got two. We got the one that you made the cards with and a bonus stamp set that coordinated with it. So the images on the front are the same. So to see which set goes in which pocket, you'll want to flip it over. The main stamp set will go inside of this one and I do slip it down inside of the folded paper. So from the front and back, you'll only see the printed piece. And like I mentioned before, if I have kept the insert from the kit, I do go ahead and just fold this in half and insert it into the pocket as well. Again, I make sure that it's between the folded paper. Once the sets are all in their envelopes, I close the flap, making sure that the flap goes behind the paper inside. That way, if it happens to get upside down, the stamp will stop in the folded portion of the DVD sleeve. Now that these are all done, I would just then go and put them in the little basket that I keep them in on my shelf. They just stand upright like this and then I can just flip through them. I'll try to get a shot of the basket I use so you can see how it works. So here's a look at where I keep my stamps at. I have a little Ikea Expedit underneath my die storage wall and this basket just stays right on the top of that so it's nice easy access. I'm not exactly sure where I got this basket at. It was probably Walmart or Target and I bought it years ago but I'm sure that you can find something similar if this storage idea looks good to you. You'll notice that on the left, it's wide enough so that I can fit my extra sleeves in there. So when I have a new stamp set that I need to get ready, I can just grab it from there and go. Now you might be saying, but I don't have a color printer. No problems. I also have a black and white laser printer and they look just as nice in black and white and it still gets the job done. And that is how I store my stamps. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll give me a thumbs up. And until my next video, I hope you're having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope that you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools that I use in the video, I do have some links in the description box.